And then there is Wisconsin, which Rolling Stone this week called ground zero for the MAGA effort to steal the next election. Quote, Republicans convinced Trump won are pushing to decertify his 2020 loss and lay the groundwork to overturn the next election if it doesn't go their way, end quote. Republicans in Wisconsin have been moving toward a legislative takeover of the state's elections, potentially putting the power to decide election outcomes in the hands of the Republican legislature. They've also spent hundreds of thousands of dollars funding an investigation into the 2020 election run by a guy who says the election was stolen and who hired former Trump officials to be his investigators. And the thing to know about Wisconsin is that they've got an election coming up one week from today. Primaries that could have huge implications for the midterm elections later this year and the 2024 presidential elections because next week's elections are for local offices all across the state. And Stop the Steal election conspiracists are running in a number of them. Now, Wisconsin has the most decentralized election system of any state. Elections are run by nearly 2,000 clerks at the local municipal level, which means that local elections in Wisconsin can have an outsized impact on how elections are actually run. And with one week to go until those elections, what are Wisconsin Democrats? And when I say Democrats, I mean both big D Democrats and small D Democrats, people who are in favor of democracy, doing to protect that democracy in the state of Wisconsin. Joining us now, Ben Wickler. He's the chairman of the Wisconsin Democratic Party. Mr. Wickler, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. We, we've tried our best to explain um, the complexities, uh, the differences in Wisconsin that some of our viewers may have from their own state. But this, uh, th this occurrence of these Stop the Steal advocates at the local level is disconcerting for a number of reasons. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're covering this. I'm glad to be with you. Wisconsin was the tipping point state in 2016 and 2020. It's the state that handed the presidency first to, to Trump, I'm sorry to say, and then to Joe Biden. And in 2022, we're going to elect our governor who ultimately certifies the state's election results in November. If Governor Evers is reelected, he will continue his, his vow to protect the right to vote and make sure our elections are, are secure. Uh, the Republicans running, like Rebecca Clayfish, has refused to rule out signing bills that would put the state legislature in charge of deciding who won. And what happens in November in that all-important governor's race will be shaped by what happens in Wisconsin in these local spring elections. You have people like Melinda Eck, who organized a Stop the Steal protest outside of City Hall in Green Bay, our third largest city in our state. She's running for city council on a slate of conspiracy theorists Stop the Stealers um, in that city. And the primary is coming up in one week, and we are organizing the living daylights out of these local races because they're often decided by just a few votes. If you get on the phone right now and call voters in Green Bay, you can help turn out the voters who make sure that the, the Stop the Steal team doesn't take over that city's city council, which has enormous control over the, the, the municipal clerk who administers the election, the budget for election administration, and a dozen other things. I, you, you make an interesting point here, because I'd be thinking for my municipal elections, I'd be looking for candidates who are going to deal with policing and, and roads and schools and, and garbage collection and things like that. So why would anybody care to vote for somebody who's a, a stop the steal advocate? But your point is valid that turnout for local elections is very, very low. So the ability to win in a local election it, it, it can, can be with very few voters. This is the thing. Wisconsin elections over and over come down to a hair's breadth. Four out of the last six presidential elections here came down to less than one percentage point. Our governor's race in 2018, Governor Evers was was elected with a 1.1 percentage point margin. That's two or three voters per precinct in our state. Um, if you look at De Pere, Wisconsin, uh, it's a you know smaller city. Kelly Rue is one of the fraudulent electors. She's on the city council in De Pere. She was just subpoenaed by the January 6th committee, and she's running for re-election. Running against her is a candidate who is actually a poll worker who believes in free and fair and secure elections. So these races could shape you know, whether voters are turned away, whether uh, if someone has an error on their absentee ballot, they get a phone call about it so they can fix it. That can shape statewide outcomes, and statewide outcomes in Wisconsin can shape national outcomes in 2024. If we want to stop the coup in 24, we've got to obsess over local elections 
right now. Yeah, I want to underscore this point because uh, you're saying this uh, caused Ezra Klein to write an op-ed for the New York Times in which he cited you saying, if you want to fight for the future of American democracy, you shouldn't spend all day talking about the future of American democracy. These local races that determine the mechanics of American democracy uh, are the ventilation shaft in the Republican Death Star. These races get zero national attention. They hardly get local attention. Turnout is often lower than 20%, which means people who actually engage have a superpower. The point you're making tonight, the point that our viewers have to hear, wherever they live in, in the country, particularly if they live in Wisconsin, is that you've got that superpower, literally registering to vote, literally showing up to vote, think attending school board meetings, attending super, uh, city council meetings, and knowing who's on the ballot could be the mechanism for saving democracy in this country. That's absolutely right. And I want to underscore something. No matter where you live in the country, you can join our virtual phone banks. We're calling voters all this weekend, and we'll be calling them through the primaries on February 15th, through the local elections on April 5th. If you go to wisdems.org slash volunteer, you can sign up, and volunteers across the country can make those reminder calls. We don't need to, to persuade hardcore Trumpists to, to vote for pro-democracy candidates. If we just remind people who voted for Joe Biden in Wisconsin in 2020 that there are local elections coming up in the next few weeks, that can make all the difference. And if they vote this spring, they're definitely voting this fall. So you're helping throw out Ron Johnson and reelecting Governor Evers at the same time. It's such a powerful act, and it's extra powerful because so few people on either side do it. Right Wing Talk Radio right now in Wisconsin is pushing these slates of candidates like Melinda Eck in Green Bay that are opposed to our democracy. And we need to organize harder than they are. We have to care about it more. Whoever works harder in these elections wins. They're not millions of dollars of TV ads. It's just person after person making phone calls when it gets a little warmer, knocking on doors. That work will determine what happens in our democracy at the local level, which scales up to the whole country. I'm just going to pause and leave it there because that is the point that I think people have to understand. Ben, thanks for making it so strongly. Ben Wickler is the chairman of the Wisconsin Democratic Party. We appreciate your time.